Hi there, my name's Emma and I work for the Tastings and Events Department and I'm here today joined by Joe Locke, MW, who is the buyer for Portugal, Loire, South Africa and Alsace. So she's got quite a busy portfolio, but today she's going to be talking about port and about the Juro in particular. So, um, Joe, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. Nice to see you. And you as well. Um, so you now buy port and Madeira, don't you, as well as um, the DOC wines in Portugal. So what difference does that make to your role as a buyer? To be honest, it's, it's, it's a pleasure. Um, I took over Port and Madeira when Mark Buckingham retired a few years ago. Um, and actually, some things haven't changed a great deal because one of the biggest producers of Port is the Symington Group and they also make table wine. So I was already working with them. It does mean that there are a couple of extra big trade tastings to go to. There's a fantastic trade tasting called the BFT, Big Fortified Tasting, which was actually set up by a couple of lovely people in the wine trade, two of my favourite people in the wine trade. Um, so go to that every year, although this year it's been cancelled. Um, there's sometimes a Primer campaign, um, much easier of course than the Bordeaux Primer campaign, but the tricky thing with the Portuguese is that they, they don't tell you until the last minute whether it's going to happen, so it's always a bit touch and go, you, you don't have many samples to taste, but it's all quite last minute, but it's exciting. It sounds really good. So um, what does make the Joro so special? I know you really like buying Portuguese, but um, what is it that makes the Joro so special? And um, how can it make so many different styles of wines? So you've got things from like your, your ports through to your rather robust styles of red, and then you've got whites in there, lighter red styles as well. How does it do that? The Joro is... It's, it's simply an extraordinary place. It's very complex. Um, it's not a, it's huge in terms of the number of vineyards. There are about 40,000 hectares of vineyards, but that's spread between a, a, just over 30,000 growers. So it's very broken down, very small parcels. Um, it's, it's stunningly beautiful. Um, but it's complex geography as well. So you've got the valley, which is very deep, very steep slopes, but you've also got lots of um, rivers, lots of tributaries, lots of um, varying aspects in the valley. So super complex geography. The rainfall varies dramatically depending on where you are. So it's about four or five times less right up at the eastern end of the Upper Douro than it is at Regua, which is really where the valley starts. And then Pinhao, which is right in the heart, is kind of roughly half the, the, the rainfall. You've got the Morale Mountains on the eastern, the western side, which protect a bit from the Atlantic influence, which maintains that heat. Um, the Dora represents about 50% of the world's mountain viticulture. So altitude plays a huge part as well. So it's fantastically complex. Um, absolutely fascinating part of the world it sounds amazing i've never actually been but one day one day i will go um so when did you first go to the Jure? and um, what was your most memorable experience there oh i've i first went i would think 20 over 20 years ago actually in a former life i used to be a buyer for the thresher group and the group of us went, I was in marketing at the time, and a group of us went and we were all girls except for um, the buyer and our host, who was from the Flagate group, who are responsible for Taylor's, Fonseca, Croft brands. And they very kindly supplied us with a hamper for the rickety old train on the way up the valley, which was quite a long journey. And it was very warm. And of course, the hamper had lovely port, almonds, a few other bits of cold meats. And having drunk a few glasses of, of, of port on the journey, our buyer Andy fell asleep, kicked off his shoes, only to find when we got to the other end that his toenails had been painted turquoise by my, one of my colleagues. So that was very memorable. But that same trip involved a boat trip on the river. I've done great treading at uh, Graham's Kinton Valvedos, which was absolutely fantastic. It takes a long time to get the colour out of your toenails, I can tell you. Um, had a wonderful trip, not long before Mark Buckingham retired, actually had a wonderful trip with some members up the door. Just a short visit, but it was, it was truly memorable. So I think every trip there is memorable in all honesty, but there've been some, some real highlights. Yeah. 
It sounds absolutely amazing. So you've obviously been involved with the Jura and Portuguese wines for, for a long time, not just in the, the Wine Society, but previously as well. Um, what have been the changes that you've seen in the Jura since you've been, since you started buying there? There've certainly been changes and they, I'd say they've been happening quite gradually over that time. So climate change is certainly very real. That's being regularly reported and that's probably dri driving a bit of a move towards even greater sustainability in the future. Um, there's been quite a lot of change in the vineyards. Traditionally, the, the, the old terraces could have as few as one or two rows of vines on them. Um, then there was a move to terraces with a few more vines, rows of vines. Then there was a move to vertical planting, uh, block planting, so planting a single grape variety in one vineyard as opposed to the old traditional field blends. There's now a bit of a trend back to the original very narrow terraces, that, although that's partly because they're, they're moving to higher, higher areas, different parts of the valley. So that certainly is a trend. Um, a lot has been driven by shortage of labour, so mechanisation has come on more and more. Initially it was in the winery, um, sort of mechanical treading as opposed to foot treading, but there's lots more mechanisation ex and experimentation trying to adapt um, equipment for the difficult conditions in the Douro. You've got a bit of a change of grapes, that's partly driven by climate change. Um, and of course you've got the DOC wines, the, the, the table wines as well as the ports. Um, which many of the producers have embraced. So there's been a lot of change. It sounds like it. Um, now, we know that quite often, you know, with all the wines that you do, especially when you put them on the system, you have a drink date for the wines, so for port and the Juro reds as well. They tend to be quite long lived, don't they? What are the kind of drinking windows for, um, for port and your, your red Juro wines? It's it's a really tricky one. I'll, I'll, if I talk about the wines first, because in a sense that's easier, we're only now getting to the stage where we are able to see just how long those wines can live. So Symington's Crozier, or the joint partnership with, with uh, Bruno Pratt and the Symington's, their first vintage, I think from memory, was the 2000, which is still showing really well now. But when we first tasted that wine, we couldn't be 100% sure how well that would keep because there were so few precedents. And so I think we're gradually, or certainly I am gradually extending the drinking windows that I'm putting on the DOC Reds with more experience of seeing how they're evolving. You know, at the beginning, honestly, it was a bit of a finger in the air. You know, the DOC Red wine production only really took off, took off about 20, 25 years ago. With the ports, of course, there's a long history. Although the way they're made has changed slightly, so who knows whether that will, will affect things in the, in, the, in the longer term. By and large, it's, it's, with sweet wines, it's one of the safest things that you can buy for cellaring. So it's one of the safest things if you want to buy a present for a child or a godchild, a christening present. Um, David Guimarange, who's, who, because he studied in uh, Australia, his nickname's Porty, um, I was chatting with him the last time I was there and he said, do you know, we rarely outlive a vintage port. And I thought that was a really lovely way of saying that it depends how you like your wine, but these are wines that can live for decades. Um, you know, I've tasted ports that are older than me and they're a lot, they look a lot younger and fitter than, than I do. So if you like the wines that have young fruit, drink them when they're younger and they're, they're certainly accessible these days. Um, but if you like the fragility and the complexity that those really mature wines uh, develop, then you need to sit on them and be prepared to sit on them for a long time. Amazing. Okay, so one question that I'm sure quite a few people are going to be asking, and um, this, this is not a definitive thing, but do you think that there's going to be a vintage declaration in 2018? Are we going to do an on premier for port? It's an interesting one because officially, we don't know yet. Uh, I alluded to that earlier, that they, they like to play their cards very close to their chest. So we don't normally have the official uh, confirmation until later this month as to whether there's going to be a declaration. However, we've just had an unprecedented pair of great vintages in a row. Mm. So it would seem unlikely, 
Um, plus, it was a more complicated vintage. Not all parts of the valley um, fed as well with the combination of heat and rainfall at differing times. So it seems un very unlikely that we'll have a universal declaration. But we might see one or two wines released, depending on the position of the vineyards. And also, sometimes if people have a special anniversary, there are one or two of those coming up this year. That might influence people's decision. But yeah, all remains to be seen. Um, watch this space. We should know in a few weeks' time. So as you say, it is literally just a case of um, keep your eye out, watch this space, and we'll see. But you exactly. think it won't be a general declaration? We think not. Okay, excellent. Now, because I'm being really nosy, I can see you've got a couple of bottles there. So what have you got on your table? Have you got yourself well, a glass of wine? I've got, I've got a glass of red and <laughs> I'll show you the, the, the glass of red. So I was, I was investigating, I, I, I know we were talking predominantly about, you know, the door is predominantly about port. Uh -huh. But actually, the table wines are so important now. And um, so I had, I had a look to see what we had in, 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 in the garage. Um, and one is the Crastadura, which is a wine that we follow regularly. This happens to be the 2015, the la my last bottle of the 2015. I bought a case because it was so delicious and it's still absolutely delicious. Um, and so this it comes from one of the loveliest estates, which is right in the heart of the valley, very close to Pignau, Quinta de Craston. Um, it's a fantastic site. If you go up on the train, you can see the vineyards. If you go up by boat, you can see the vineyards. And if you drive, you drive up on the other side of the valley, you get the most stunning view um, of the of, of the crest at the top of the hill. Um, and this is their, if you like, their entry point wine, their everyday drinking wine. They do a white as well, which we sometimes buy, but it's the red that we follow. And it's just a cracking example of Adora Red. All indigenous grapes. Um, it's got lovely colour, um, always a lovely deep colour, but it's got a lovely perfume, it's got structure. Um, I was going to ask you actually, Emma, about wine and food. This Dura Reds go really well with cheese because, of course, they're made from the same grapes as port, so there is an association. So if you do prefer red with your cheese, then, then a Dura Red is a really good one to go for. Um, Absolutely. Do you, do you, I mean, do you find that? How do you, how do you drink these, these wines? I Being tend a good to, foodie. <laughs> quite often I tend to drink the glass of red wine whilst I'm making the dinner, which I know is complete, probably complete sacrilege, but um, I do, I love that, that Crasto as well. Um, it does, because it's relatively full bodied, it does go really well with your kind of more gutsy dishes. Um, mm -hmm. So, but moving into summer as we are, um, I would probably have it with things like barbecue. So, um, you know, anything relatively robustly flavoured. Um, so if it's meat, you're looking at um, or kind of pieces of beef on the barbecue, even sausages and things like that, because they've got enough flavour to go to match the flavour in your, in your Juro Red. Or if you're yeah. going veggie, then... Um, I've seen some really nice recipes for things like barbecued celeriac recently, and I think that would probably work mm. really well as well. So anything with a good amount of um, a good amount of body to it would be perfect. Yeah. So mm. thank you, Evan. That's made me feel really hungry. Thank you ever so much for your time. Um, if anybody wants to learn more about port, what's the best way to go about it? Obviously, apart from tastings and events, which we're always going to put forward as being your main aim. But um, where else can you learn? Well, you're right. You know, regular tastings is obviously a great opportunity, especially as you, you won't necessarily always want to open a bottle of port if you're if you're just at home alone. Whereas if you go to a tasting, that's a great opportunity to try some of those things you might not have discovered before. But otherwise, you know, we're trying to, we're doing some of this uh, this work online. Producers do the same. The producer websites are absolutely fantastic these days. So explore those. Um, there's a very good website called uh, Vintage Port. I think it's called the Vintage Port site. Um, it is a Symington site, so it's um, it's about their ports, but they produce such a variety of labels that that you know you're going to get a real cross section, and it gives you fascinating vintage reports, advice on when to drink the wines. So yeah, explore online. There are, there's plenty of material there, but of course there's there's 
there's no better alternative than going there to visit. So if you've never been to Porto, where you can go over the river to Villanova de Gaia, where all the lodges um, have been developed, almost all the big names have a visitor center now. There's an extraordinary new development, which is approaching completion. I guess it must have slowed down under the current circumstances, but um, the world of wine in, in, in Porto, um, which has been championed by Adrian Bridge, who's the MD of the Flatgate Group. Um, most extraordinary complex um, where they've converted some of the old port lodges right in the heart of Villanova de Gaia to make a big visitor center with lots of, with a museum, with lots of restaurants, tasting facilities. And then from there, you can very easily either drive up the Dura Valley, although if you go the fast road, you miss the views. So take the slow route if, if you are going to drive, um, but you can get boats up river and of course you can take the train and even if it's not necessarily the rickety old train I once took, you do get absolutely stunning views of the river if you take the train up the Dora. Um, and what you can do is combine boat and train, so if you take the train up there, you can then take lovely boat trips, perhaps to take you higher up as well, where, um, you know, where you just get even more views and it's really um, it's not very, uh, very highly populated. Uh, it is more geared up for tourists now. So, for example, Dow's already has a visitor centre in the heart of Pinyao, a stone's throw literally from the railway station. Um, and Naval has opened a new one too. So, plenty to see when you're there. So, that will be my recommend recommendation. Go and, go and try it on site because there's nothing better. That sounds amazing. That's my next holiday sorted. Um, well, thanks <laughs> so much, Joe, and um, we'll speak later. Thank you very much. Thanks, Emma. See you.